And as your local election headquarters, PIX11 has been inviting the candidates for New York City mayor to share their story and their vision for New York City. So today, one lifelong New Yorker and former United States Secretary of Housing and Urban Development is looking to tackle some of the city's biggest issues from housing to job accessibility, even health care. Sean Donovan joins us live. Good morning. So good to see you. Hey. Good morning, Dan and Betty. It's great to be with you. Absolutely. Great to have you. Okay, so you've worked in several different positions, specifically leading the Department of Housing and Urban Development and Housing Preservation and Development. So what makes you now want to pursue running for mayor? Well, Betty, no one in this race has led through crisis again and again, crisis in New York and crisis in the country the way I have. As you mentioned, I was housing commissioner in the wake of 9-11. When the worst housing crisis of our lifetimes hit this country, President Obama asked me to lead our country back. And when Sandy hit our shores, he asked me to lead the entire federal recovery effort. And I guess because no good deed goes unpunished, he then asked me to lead the $4 trillion federal budget. And just weeks later, Ebola hit. And I ended up side by side with Dr. Fauci, President Obama, then Vice President Biden, making sure it didn't become a pandemic that cost more than 30,000 New Yorkers their lives. So no one has led through crisis in the mm -hmm. way that I have, and New York's in crisis. We need a mayor who yeah. understands how to repair and rebuild this city. And you're a born and bred New Yorker, right? You grew up on the Upper East Side. I want to get to some of the issues right now facing New York, because in your campaign, you know, Mr. Donovan, you mentioned focusing on providing 500,000 jobs. Boy, do people need those jobs, especially because of the pandemic, right? Quality health care, we learned that. The equity bonds promising to provide $2,000 annually to children under the age of 18. All things that really New Yorkers have needed for quite some time, but have really been emphasized because of COVID-19. How, right? That's the big thing. How do you expect to make it all possible? Well, Dan, it's all here in the plan that I published just a couple of weeks ago. Go to my website, SeanForNYC.com, and learn. Here's one of the key proposals. You mentioned many of them, but we know that folks haven't been able to get tested for COVID. They haven't been able to get their vaccines because they don't have the access to health care in their neighborhoods. We also know that black and brown communities in particular were hit so hard because they had underlying health conditions because they couldn't get fresh food. They didn't have parks. And so what I'm gonna do is change the way we plan this city to make sure that everybody lives in what I call a 15 minute neighborhood. Now, what's that? That means you have everything you need for a life of opportunity within 15 minutes of your front door. A great job, a, a great school for your kids, transportation to get you around the city quickly, but also the things I mentioned, you know, access to uh, health care that would allow you to get a vaccine in your neighborhood quickly, access to a park or fresh food. Mm -hmm. All of those things should be available to every single New yeah. Yorker. But instead, right now, you can predict a life's chances for a child by the zip code they grow up in. And that's right. wrong. I would change that as mayor. Within 15 minutes, that's, that's quite a goal there, especially with budget shortfalls and whatnot. So looking forward to hearing more details on that. You also enacted a new agenda, including immigration. How do you plan to support immigrant communities? Well, first of all, Betty, I should say, I am passionate about this city because my dad is an immigrant. My, my grandfather actually was one of 10 poor kids who grew up on the south side of London, went to West Africa alone as a teenager, then to South America. My dad grew up in Costa Rica and Lima, Peru, and came to this city and found opportunity. And so I believe every immigrant and every New Yorker should have that same opportunity. What we need to do is make sure that we're investing in our schools uh, we know that dual language schools, for example, are not just good for immigrants, they're good for everyone uh, and can create great opportunities for all New Yorkers. That's yeah. one thing. We have to make sure that we're providing city services in all the languages that we speak, the, more than uh, 150 languages. And so we need to make this a city that just like for my dad, welcomes and provides opportunity for every single New Yorker. Yeah, and, uh, and you're bringing up immigrant communities, and I, and I wanna speak about what's happening right now in New York, especially within the Asian American community right now, especially because we see the attacks on the rise. I ask every single mayoral candidate this right now about what their plan is for safety. Would you keep Commissioner Shea, and what is your view to restore trust within so many communities with the NYPD? Well, Dan, I think we need a fresh start in this city. We need to build respect and safety and I have a, the most detailed plan to ensure that we're really focusing our police 
on guns and violent crime, the things that most New Yorkers are really focused on in their own communities, but at the same time, creating the transparency, the accountability uh, to weed out the bad apples and to ensure we're building trust between communities. And, and what I would say is, New Yorkers don't need to trust me on this. They should look at my record. I'm mm -hmm. the only candidate who's worked across the country as part of President Obama's 21st Century Policing Task Force to create real respect and trust. And I'm the only one who's really helped those uh, coming out of Rikers and, and prison to break the cycle of incarceration. Uh, I, I gave housing to those folks and it, was, it worked so well. 40 other cities around the country have replicated the model I created to help folks get back into their communities when they uh, are leaving prison as well. And we need to be investing in those solutions, mm -hmm. not just in changes to policing. All right, Sean Donovan, it's a big agenda, a lot on your mind. Looking forward to continuing this conversation with you. We do appreciate you being here today. Wonderful to be with you both. Uh, thanks so much for having me on. All right, talk soon. Thank you.